Squaresoft, Atlus, Falcom, Triace, Level 5, Monolith Soft, Intelligent Systems. Yeah, we all know those big shots in the JRPG industry, but today I'd like to highlight the work of several other developers who aren't as well known, yet they've also created a decent amount of awesome JRPGs. So these are the 10 most underrated JRPG developers of all time. Let's begin! Number 10. Matrix Software Most people that maybe know this company know that it was founded by ex-employees of Climax Entertainment. Nobody wanted to make a sequel to continue with the Landstalker series which had seen its origins on the Genesis, so they created Matrix Software first and foremost to develop a spiritual successor. The result was Alondra on the PlayStation, an action RPG with some Zelda influences which ended up being more of an adventure puzzle game more than anything, still a cult classic nowadays. After this, they went on to work on other games such as Tornico, The Last Hope, a bizarre JRPG I've covered before, Alondra 2 also on PS1 which was a commercial failure, and Dual Hearts on the PS2, a spiritual successor to the Alondra series. Pretty solid hidden gem by the way. Now, let's face it, this is a company that's mostly known for porting several Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest games to other systems, especially portable, that's kept them very busy ever since with barely any time to focus on the development of their own games. They actually co-developed Final Fantasy for the after years, you know. Other JRPGs include Avalon Code and Nostalgia, both on the Nintendo DS, the amazing sequel to Brigandine, now called The Legend of Runercia, a strongly recommended strategy RPG on the PS4 and Switch, was done by them. And let's not forget about the almost universally banned Omega Labyrinth and all of its versions, <laughs> oh yeah. So you see, Matrix Software is still going on today and it's way more than just a company that ports Square Enix games. Number 9. Red Entertainment It baffles me how an elderly company such as this one is still somewhat unknown outside East Asia. They started back in 1976 under the name Red Company but didn't start developing games until the mid-80s. Their first RPGs never left Japan, known over here as the Far East of Eden series. But they're mostly known for creating the legendary Sakura Wars series. Almost every single one of them, including my favorite, So Long My Love, has been developed by them. Unfortunately, the rest of the games have stayed in Japan. And no, they did not work on the PS4 reboot by Sega. This is because in 2011 they were acquired by a Chinese company that later sold them to Oizumi Corporation. Yeah. The last thing they worked on was the visual novel Our World Descended on Switch and PS4. Back in the old days, they co-developed Nostalgia with the previously mentioned Matrix software on the Nintendo DS. They also co-developed Thousand Arms with Atlus on the PlayStation. Both of these hidden gems are pretty good, actually. Finally, they also co-developed the entire Agarest series, a bunch of strategy RPGs for PC, PS3 and the Xbox 360, with Idea Factory and Compile Heart. Yeah, these guys had such great ideas for gaming, I wonder what they're doing nowadays. Number 8. Tree Crescendo these developers should be way higher on the list, on the first places actually, but it isn't and I'll tell you why in a bit. It was founded by former members of the sound team of Triace in 1999. Their first JRPG was none other than the legendary Batan Kaitos on the GameCube, of course followed up by its sequel, Origins. But these two games were co-developed primarily by Monolith Soft. Tree Crescendo kept working on the side for Triace until they signed a contract with Bandai Namco. Eternal Sonata on the 360 and PS3 was their very first JRPG developed by themselves and none other. After that beautiful masterpiece, they went back again to co-develop stuff. 
Blue Dragon Awakened Shadow on the DS with Mistwalker, an action RPG and the final game in the Blue Dragon trilogy, Fragile Dreams on the Wii with Namco, a survival game with RPG elements, some Little Battlers Experience games with level 5, some Digimon games, hell, they even worked on the last three Super Smash Bros games! Finally, Trick Crescendo seemed to be fully absorbed by Bandai Namco Studios to work on Tales of Zestiria, then Berseria, and every single game since then until Tales of Arise. So because of the first JRPGs they created, it needed to be in this list, but not ranked higher because I believe they aren't as underrated anymore as they once were. In fact, I don't even know why they still use the name Trick Crescendo when everything they do nowadays is under Namco's microscope. Number 7. Sting Entertainment They are the creators of the Department Heaven series, but since it's a small private company, most people aren't familiar with them. They actually started all the way back in 1989 and developed a bunch of games for the PC Engine and the Super Famicom. In fact, one of their first JRPGs is called Treasure Hunter G. Pretty famous over there, but yeah, only over there since it never came outside. After working on the train wreck that was Baroque on the Sega Saturn, later remade on the PS2 and Wii, they jumped to the Dreamcast with Evolution 1 and 2. Two overlooked turn-based RPGs that were later ported to the GameCube. These ones are pretty fun! But like I mentioned, they're mostly known for the Department Heaven series, which includes several RPGs from the Game Boy Advance and the PSP. Perhaps Riviera The Promised Land is the most popular, or maybe Yggdra Union, both remastered on the PSP some years later. Yggdra became its own series and it got a bunch of sequels, but we'd never got them. Though thankfully we will at least get its first sequel in a future remaster of both. Other titles in this series include Knights in the Nightmare and Gognir, the latter being a pretty solid hidden gem by the way. Hexis Force, however, is what I think is the best JRPG ever developed by them, and I've strongly recommended it in this channel several times. Generation of Chaos Pandora's Reflection, digital only on PSP, is also one of their better works. Oh, and remember those Dock Upon games on the Wii, PS2 and DS? Sting also developed them. And since I don't want to talk about Dungeon Travelers 2, even though I just did, let's move on to the next developer. Number 6. Tokyo RPG Factory This is a small one that's not even 10 years old. It was specifically created and founded by Square Enix to develop more traditional style JRPGs. At first, they were only supposed to develop a trilogy of games based on the uh, snow, moon and flowers, a Japanese expression in artistic themes. The snow game was called I Am Setsuna, released in 2016 on PS4 and PS Vita, later on Switch and Steam. I'm pretty sure that's their most popular game so far. The next one, based on Moon, was Lost Sphere in 2017 for the same systems except the PS Vita. These two were turn-based RPGs very reminiscent of the classic JRPGs of the 90s and early 2000s. Finally, they developed an action RPG based on the Flowers theme. This was called Oninaki, released in 2019. This one was more somber, tragic and darker than its turn-based brothers. But anyway, I strongly recommend all three games from this company and I do hope they continue to develop more JRPGs in the future. For the past few years they have been allegedly working on a new title, obviously no longer based on the snow, moon and flower expression. Hopefully we'll get news soon. On a side note, a few staff members will work on the upcoming Armed Fantasia by the creator of Wild Arms. Interesting, huh? Number 5. Cattle Call Cattle Call was founded by former members of Data East in 1998. Some of the employees had worked on the Metal Max series, but we didn't get any of them until Metal Saga for the PlayStation 2. But anyway, as Cattle Call, the first game they developed is a pretty obscure turn-based RPG called Tsugunai Atonement. It looks like a horror game, but it's not, even though you play as a ghost that can possess a few NPCs to carry on on certain quests. This is a good RPG, but it doesn't compare to the second one they did, Ark the Lad Twilight of the Spirits. 
The Art of Lad series was always being developed by subsidiaries of Sony, and while Cattle Call was no such thing, this fourth entry ended up being an exclusive to the PlayStation 2. You already know I'm a big fan of this strategy RPG, and I think it's the best Ark the Lad ever made. Contrary to the horrendous action RPG sequel, End of Darkness, sadly also developed by them. Besides other JRPGs that never came out of Japan, I think this company is mostly known nowadays for its 3DS titles, The Legend of Legacy released to a commercial failure, and its incredible follow-up The Alliance Alive. These two were co-developed by a company known as Gretzo, and of course the legendary publisher Furyu. Such an underrated developer cattle call, and just for the record, they also made Opuna on the Wii, which is good but kind of forgettable, and the original Metal Maxino on PS4, yeah, the good one, not its broken remake. Number 4, Lancarse. Lancarse is a pretty obscure developer probably because it's been jumping from publisher to publisher since its inception. While their first game stayed in Japan on the DS, they're mostly known for co-developing Etrian Odyssey 1 and 2 with Atlus. In fact, they stayed with Atlus for a long time until a few years ago when other companies published their games. Their greatest contribution for Atlus was, without a doubt, Strange Journey on the DS and 3DS. They had a lot of experience now with dungeon crawlers in first person, so of course, they created the epitome of the genre with this game. My favorite JRPG of them, however, is definitely Lost Dimension, a strategy RPG on the PS3 and the PS Vita. I've also strongly recommended this game on multiple occasions. Now, this is the last JRPG they did published by Atlus. After that, they went on to create a couple of Gundam fighting games for Bandai Namco. We wouldn't see another JRPG until Zanki Zero on the PS4, PS Vita and Windows, this time published by a legendary company, Spike Chunsoft. An extremely bizarre but highly interesting JRPG based on survival and also with some dungeon crawler elements in first person. A few years later, they jumped now over the Nipponichi software territory, with the massive failure that was Monarch, a great JRPG that turned out to be complete wasted potential. Their most recent game, now published by Square Enix, is called The Dio Field Chronicle. I only played a demo of this one and I absolutely loved it, a real-time strategy RPG that I can safely recommend just based on those two or three hours of demo. I'm a big fan of Lancarse, as you can see, which is why I ranked it so high on the list. Hope to see more of them in the future, even if it's once again a different publisher. Number 3. I think this is pronounced Imagipok or Image Epoch. Anyway, founded back in 2005, this is a pretty controversial company. It was established by Ryoei Mikage, who in 2015 apparently went missing. The CEO of Idea Factory tried reaching out to him, but to no avail. And after a few months of nothing, Imagipok filed for bankruptcy. Sometime later, Mikage reappeared and changed its name to Mikage LLC. What the freaking hell, man? But that's all the info I got from Wikipedia. Anyway, I'm a big fan of this company because they developed one of my absolute favorite RPGs on the PSP, Fate Extra, which I've covered extensively in this channel. It was, of course, also co-developed by the Fate developers Type Moon, but their first JRPG was actually Luminous Arc, a strategy RPG on the DS that I've also recommended numerous times. Great for beginners, by the way, unlike its sequel, which was far harder and very unbalanced. Still a decent game, don't worry. We never got the third game in this little series, unfortunately. Let's not forget about Sands of Destruction, another slightly broken RPG in terms of difficulty, but pretty damn solid. They're also the creators of the seventh Dragon series on the PSP and DS, even though we've only gotten the 3DS game that wasn't actually developed by them. Moving on to Arc Rise Fantasia, another fantastic grindfest on the Wii, just like Black Rock Shooter on the PSP. And yes, they also created this horrible abomination on the PlayStation 3 and the controversial Criminal Girls on the PSP and PS Vita. I think Imagipok went bankrupt mainly because these last titles, they didn't sell well, one for being straight up terrible and the other for being too controversial. 
Their last RPG, Stella Glow on the 3DS, was a great strategy RPG to put them back on track, but by then it was already too late. <sighs> Number 2. Sacknoth, also known as Nautilus. Sacknoth was a studio founded by Hiroki Kikuta, the music composer of Secret of Mana and Trials of Mana. It was specifically created to develop Kudelka, the next big thing on the genre in PlayStation 1. Kikuda did almost every major thing of the game, but also went through some turbulent development, mainly because of staff differences. Kurelka ended up being a not-so-well-designed video game, failing to mix survival horror and RPG in a great way. Not a bad game, though, and still interesting to play. But we all know that the true highlight of Sagnot was when Kikuda left and Matsuso Mashida took the reins of the company to create Shadow Hearts a fantastic trilogy of turn-based RPGs and their iconic Judgment Ring. After the first game, they were bought by Aruse in 2002 and changed their name from Sacknoth to Nautilus. After the release of the third game, Shadow Hearts from the New World, in 2006, a year later they changed the name once again, this time to Aruse Global Trading Corporation to make goddamn pachinko machines! This is the primary reason why Shadow Hearts died, and some of the key members went on to found Feel Plus, yep, to work on games like Lost Odyssey. Matsuso Machida recently launched a Kickstarter alongside the creator of Wild Arms, Akifu Mechanico, to develop Penny Blood, a spiritual successor to Shadow Hearts. In my eyes, Sacknot will always be one of the most underrated JRPG developers ever, obviously because of the aforementioned reasons. They never got the appreciation they truly deserved. Number 1. Career Soft Career Soft was pretty much established by members of Masaya Games under the name Team Career. After a bunch of games for computer systems, their legendary breakthrough series Lang Greaser came into existence. Despite developing the first five games of this historically important strategy RPG series, only the first one was released outside Japan. It was known as Warsong on the Sega Genesis. Warsong and its sequel were much, much later remastered, pretty much remade, for modern systems, but CareerSoft had nothing to do with these releases. The point is, after this worldwide lack of support from Masaya Games, Team Career had it with them, and were purchased by Atlus, rebranding their name to CareerSoft. And that's when they decided to develop one of my favorite JRPG series of all time, and the reason why this company is number one in this video, Grow Lancer. Pretty much a spiritual successor to Langreaser, but instead of being grid-based tactical RPGs, they were now real-time strategy RPGs, where you could give directions to your characters and they will fight on their own. The first Grow Lancer never made it overseas, what the hell, Atlus? Thankfully, Working Designs compiled its two follow-ups and released them in a collection called Grow Lancer Generations on the PS2. Atlus noticed then there was indeed interest in this series outside Japan and decided to localize the rest of the games, Grow Lancer 5 being pretty much one of my favorite games of all time. Sadly, Grow Lancer died after a sixth title because Atlus went through some financial issues. Technically speaking, this was the last time we saw the name CareerSoft being mentioned, but in reality, the team was fully absorbed by Atlus when Sega bought them, and they went on to create Devil Survivor 1 and 2 on the Nintendo DS, later ported to the 3DS. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you already know I'm a die-hard fan of both games, amongst my favorites in the SMT universe. Now you know why I think CareerSoft is by far what I consider as the most underrated JRPG developer of all time. And that's my list, guys. If you think I forgot about companies like Vanillaware, Media Vision, Ghost, or these others, it's because I think they're pretty popular nowadays. Not as mainstream yet, but definitely not underrated. Anyway, I hope you can give these 10 developers a chance and try out at least one of their games. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!